It's on. Bam. So you guys were leaving the bridge area, which now has several sparking consoles. There's no full-blown fires since you started using your fire extinguisher. And uh, you guys are heading out of the main door, basically. Uh, to describe this ship, it's basically like... I'm trying to imagine a parallel from sci-fi, but it's like a box with the image of a just a sleek vessel's bridge at the front and then jets at the back and sides and stuff. Like, this is a troop transport. This is meant to transport 50 to 100 men. Think of, like, a like an aircraft... Um, no, no, like a like a transport aircraft, but without the wings, kind of. Exactly. Just like a, yeah. Yep, you got it. And that is this. So, you guys exit out of that one door and uh, start going down the very short hallway, which only has a couple of doors to the med bay. And uh, as soon as you enter this hallway, you can already see there are many men that were injured in the fall, though none nearly as badly as uh, Dillinger, seemingly. A lot of them seem to just kind of be, like, cradling an arm or, like, holding their knee, something like that. Uh, None of them seem to have head injuries, or at least not many of them. Uh, There are maybe a dozen people in this hall. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you guys go to the med bay and open the door. The very first thing you see is uh, the three separate medical personnel. There are two combat medics and one basically onboard doctor uh, standing around the lieutenant on an operating table uh, in a clean room, mm-hmm. which is beyond the actual uh, like treatment room and sick bay and stuff like that. So beyond the plexiglass window to there, uh, the doctor and one of the medics exit. And the last medic starts putting a tarp over the lieutenant's body. Yeah, I would, uh, last people just walk up and just, what, what happened? Uh, yeah, one of the, uh, the, the medic uh, walks up to you and is like, I'm very busy right now, but um, the, the lieutenant was in the process of unseating himself from the captain's cockpit and the impact uh, he's dead uh, trauma to the head fuck um, do you have oh shit yeah he notices Lee coming in with Dillinger just on his back put him on the floor and once you hear that you just look around and you notice all the beds there's maybe 15 of them are filled um, they seem to have someone with some kind of injury. Yeah, I um, I just like look around the room. I'm like, are there any like rolling chairs? You know, like like just things you could roll up to like or like stools or anything. Yep, plenty of stools. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just like point at one of those to Lee. Set him there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lee walks over. The medic uh, walks behind him and seems to just check uh, Dillinger's pulse. Chief Officer Dillinger, I assume. Yeah. He's dead. And he just walks away. Yeah, just... Yeah. And Lee just... Shit. And he just starts slumping the body uh, onto the floor. (sighs) What the fuck? I just, like, look around. Is there any, like, lab coats hanging or, like, doctor's coats or anything? Um... Yes, yeah. There is this one on the wall next to the doorway leading in. Yeah, I'm just. I'll just grab it and um, yeah. I just toss it over to Lee. And like, yep, Lee catches know. it, starts draping it over Dillinger's face and torso, and the doors to the med bay uh, open yet again. Uh, Caleb, you're you're probably right next to Lasky, most likely, mm-hmm. and you see. Um, you see the sergeant major uh, just stand basically in the doorway as kind of panting a little bit. I need any of you that can stand into the... Oh, God. Anyone who can stand, just come with me. Come on. Transport bay now. What yeah, for? He starts leaving. Now! And he leaves the room. 
Yep, I follow. Uh, yeah, and you hear the movement of uh, base, what basically are supply drop crates in the transport bay, which would normally be used in ground operations to literally, upon uh, flying over a base, so as to save fuel and time, just straight up drop supplies in a, in a crate. Uh, you hear those scraping across the deck. And what do you all do? What do you two do? So they sound like um, they're sort of sliding towards us? Or? No, 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 no. As in, you, you just hear you just hear through the, the bulkheads in the transport bay themselves. You just hear movement of steel on steel. Yeah. Okay. Scraping. Yep. Well, let's go and figure out what the hell is going on. I'm just about here pulling the plug on this mission. Understood, Lieutenant. Hmm? Sorry, second Lieutenant. Right. Right. Let's go. Yep. Yep. I follow close at his heels. You follow him? Yep. And you guys uh, see Lee's falling close behind. A couple of the men in bed start slowly standing up. The medical officers uh, start walking as well, and there's a small chain of people filing in amongst, in front of, and behind you guys to the transport bay. And at the transport bay, uh, basically these, again, sliding doors slide to either side, and you are on a catwalk that's basically hanging above the transport bay, this wide open area for drills and storage and supplies. And basically, this would be the place where if you guys had uh, had mech hardware, uh, there are rigging units that will put it on you. But you guys don't have that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, that's why it's such a big place, basically, because it can it, it can hold all kinds of artillery, yeah. hardware, that sort of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys are on the catwalk. You notice everyone just rushing around, starting to muster. And you notice, again, those, those really big big steel crates with basically pre-built in blast parachutes uh, that are, each of them is probably the size of a car and like a big car and they're just being dragged, pushed by like half a dozen men mm. uh, across the storage bay because they were ostensibly flung part ways. Damn. Yeah. And yeah, they got it way worse down here than we did up there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the men, the men lying in the sick bay, looked pretty bad in terms of like just what happened to them. Like a couple of them looked like they had bloody arms and legs, and some of them were wrapped their head, that sort of thing. That's an idea of what might have happened down here. So you notice the sergeant just starting to just scrambling to give orders, and he is scrambling. It's very chaotic. Um, the soldiers start filing past the two of you as you're standing on the catwalk. Yeah, so I just, I'll like look around at what's happening, just kind of ignore the soldiers, and I just kind of storm up to the sergeant. Yep, uh, the sergeant major. Yeah, so you you go down the uh, this very steep set of stairs with very narrow stairs, and you get to the bottom, you notice the sergeant major uh, currently basically helping a man uh, put put his combat armor rig on. Um, it's not like a mech suit, but it's 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 pretty good plates, that sort of thing. And he turns, sees you. <sighs> there you are, Lasky. Good of you to show up. Yeah, cut the shit. What? What are you doing? He just kind of starts looking down. Come with me. Uh, says, no. What I need to know. Is what are you doing? Seeing as how the lieutenant is dead, that makes me the commanding officer here, right? So I want to know what the fuck you're doing. Who ordered you to deploy? I made the call. <laughs> no. You made the... Why don't That's you come with me? really bad, Sergeant. Why? Protocol does indicate that he is correct, sir. <sighs> yeah, the Sergeant Major just glares at you for a second, Caleb, and looks away. Well, Lieutenant, acting, could I please show you why I've mustered everyone? 
Very well. <sighs> yeah, he starts walking over uh, to one side of the transport bay. And he seems to be walking towards basically the chief exhaust console, mm. which controls the airflow within the transport bay uh, and pretty much air conditioning, that sort of thing. And he starts punching in. This is very much an analog console compared to you guys in the bridge, but he starts punching in uh, a couple of commands. And the basically the chief vent to the right of this console starts opening slowly. And you start to see inside as the light shines. Uh, he just turns slightly towards you. Why don't you give it a look? You look inside. Yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of... Yeah, you look I'll inside. And you see this really strange substance again. This black tar-looking stuff. Just not coating, but kind of pockmarked here and there within the within the ventilation system. And as you're looking in, he says, I had a hunch of sorts that it might not be safe to stay in the ship. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Increasingly ever peculiar. You ever seen anything like this? I just heard anything. I just looking at Caleb. I mostly handle computers, and I was reset as of a year ago. Before that, I could not tell you. Shit. Who has been exposed to this? Nobody's touched it, as far as I know. Doesn't seem to be a smell, but I don't know if that matters. Mm. Would you like me to try? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I'm gonna kneel down and just like can do. put like a essentially just like a fingertip mm -hmm. against the sludge to sort of like gauge its consistency and such. If I am able, yeah, yeah. So you you start reaching out a fingertip to it, and as your finger gets close to it, it almost seems to recede slightly, mm -hmm. just away from your finger. Um, it has it it has a visual effect of ferromagnetic fluid mm -hmm. moving away from a negative uh, magnet. Yeah. Mm. So I like put, yeah. put like a whole hand and like push that and like start seeing that it move. Yeah, it starts just rolling around the vent shaft. It appears that it does not want me to attempt to make contact with it. I... Son of a bitch. We got a medical officer down here. Uh, you hear some hurried footsteps. Mm -hmm. We may be able to corral it into some kind of box or jar. Yeah, you see to that. Sergeant, I want you to get every single one of your men outside of this room right now. Anybody that's going to be stationed in here, give them an uh, environmental suit. We've got extras in the storage containers. And now, seeing as how this is a, uh, a hangar that we can use to drop supplies in and out of orbit, that means that we have a secure airlock on one of the doors. So I think it'd be a bit presumptuous, uh, pre presumptuous of us to just abandon ship entirely. We can use it to airlock and just assume that whatever this is, is contaminating the station as well. Yes? I'd so assume. I think the best course of action would be for us to stay on the ship. <sighs> Suppose it's a good idea. All right, I, I, Lieutenant, uh, men, I want first and second platoons. He starts ordering the platoons, uh, who are basically most combat oriented out of the ship, and the ones uh, without as much experience to remain. Yeah. So the ship is the ship is going to have, uh, or no squads. He didn't say platoon. Uh, the he, he's going to leave one squad as observer so that's um that is five men basically yeah at minimum capacity and uh, he shows them where the suits are they start going around the medical officer comes down uh walks up to the vent you're in front of and uh like may i same one you were talking to before yeah yeah he walks up in front of it looks inside 
Uh, the only light coming into this thing is from within the transport bay itself. It's very dark. And uh, he's just looking up, looking up, putting his head in the vent shaft and seems to be coating the entirety of the pipe. We Not are fully aware of though. that. Is it biological? Uh, he he pulls up a, a bag he had at his side, opens it. He pulls out a little sort of wooden, um, those little flat wooden sticks, basically, that you would put on your tongue and just kind of swab. It's a swab. Yeah, he swabs a little away. And it does not uh, rush away from the swab as it did your hand, Caleb. And he pulls it back to him. And as he as he brings it back out of the vent, it seems to almost start to liquefy because it was this viscous, thick substance like tar, as I said. And it seems to start just dripping down uh, this 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 little this uh, little swab he has. And he's like, shit. He just holds it upside down. Um. And tries to push it back into the vent shaft. A couple drops hit the steel floor, the transport bay. And he's like, I've never seen anything like this. It changes consistency at a whim. I, hmm. Uh, he says, uh, do either of you have a lighter? I pull one out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm like, yeah, yeah uh, at my console. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I like un- I unhinge my suitcase and like uh, take one out and like hand it to him. Yeah, this is the quickest way that I know to tell if it's biological. Not it fucking anything else up. He takes the letter, tries to light it, and as he lights the swab, the fire almost seems to not interact with this substance at all. It's as though the fire simply goes through it. But as soon as the substance rolls down, um, like a droplet basically touches his glove, it's as though a drop of water touches a paper towel. It is instantly absorbed. And his glove just has this sort of very, very dark little splotch on it. Shit. I would remove that if I were you. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, he starts removing the glove. And... um, as he removes the glove, you notice that the finger that the splotch was on under the glove has a very faint, dark, basically similar splotch on it. He's like, that's strange. That's not good. He starts trying to rub it away on an arm. I really would not recommend you do that. It seems to spread through contact. Well, it's already been absorbed. That doesn't make any sense, eh? Is there anything like on his elbow that's like like that's oh, that dark at all? Off. Like yeah, yeah, or or it's like transferred and gone like dark or, or um, anything at he all? He doesn't. No, nothing. Nothing seems to have been transferred. And actually, as he brings it back up, the splotch is gone. That's peculiar. Shit. Um, he he takes out of the bag a small glass jar, opens it for such purposes, and swabs a little more, shoves it in, caps it. I'll text this quickly. You lot seem to have a lot to do. Make sure you find a colleague to keep an eye on you, just in case the contamination starts having ill effects on your body. As soon as I hear the word uh, contamination, I just... uh, Hold hold on. Hold on, Doctor. Sergeant? Yeah, the Sergeant Major's a little ways off. He's like, you call for me, Lieutenant Lasky? What for? What for? I just need two of your men. Jared! Uh, vanilla! Come on. Vanilla. Vanilla. Not vanilla. That's an Italian name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, they, two, two men start coming over there in, like, half military dress. And, uh... So, yes, sir? I'm sorry, but, uh... Because of basic containment protocol... It says in Section 2.2b that for it to come into any contact substance otherwise that we're not familiar with that could be biological in nature, I can't have you wandering around the ship. Yeah, he, he nods him, his head. Yeah, put him some, some, somewhere secure that he can't get out of and watch him. I'll take that and ensure that another medical officer finds out and like, extend my hand Thank to like, take the jar. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, like, he, I'm like trying to think of somewhere you. to put him just... 
lock him in the airlock for now. Yeah, he, he looks at you with eyes kind of wide open. Um, might I recommend the operating room in the med bay? I will I give up my anywhere inside the interior of the ship. Airlock. There are at least All fifteen right. people passing through the med bay at any given moment. That's true. Okay, I'll I'll go. Yeah, and uh, he he nods to the, the two men around him, and they begin escorting him. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, and as it is, it is simply chaos around the two of you. Uh, Caleb, you, uh, the uh, the other medical officer who seemed to see everything, just standing a few paces away, like, I'll take the, the sample. Thank yeah, you very I'll much. I'll like, hold it by the top. Up. Yeah, he has uh, he has gloves on, just like the, the other medical officer. He grabs it by the top and bottom. Let me know if anybody comes into contact with that whatsoever. All right. Will do. Yeah, right. uh, the liquid, whatever whatever the substance is, seems to be contained by this jar, uh, by the glass. Is there any way we have to seal off the vent? Maybe. Uh, uh, yeah, I just, just overcomes. Just sergeant, get a couple men Hi. and get incendiary units. See if you can melt this shit off. Will do. Uh, have to get into the armory, but... I suggest the rest of you, before going on station, might want to grab environmental suits. We don't know if this is airborne, if it's all over the place, whatnot. Because if any of your men come into contact with this substance, I'm sorry to say I cannot allow them back on this ship. That uh, goes with you included. Yeah, the the men are looking at you a bit perplexed, and the sergeant, who seemed to hear what you said, uh, comes over to you from somewhere else. Lieutenant, we don't have enough environmental suits for everyone. We can well, maybe suit up three squads. Then suit up who you can. And, I don't know, draw straws. Unless you want to leave men on the ship, that's fine with me. Just anybody that goes outside there without a suit on, I'm not letting back inside this ship. I hear you. Yeah, and... Things start happening. Uh, people start taking some suits out of storage, and you guys are making your way. Uh, so, what are you doing right now, Lasky? Um, I am. I. I just. I start walking back towards the uh, the bridge because I want to get out of this room, right? Because I want to get this. Because we can. We can. Uh, we can seal this room because it has an airlock. I'm assuming because it's yep. the storage area, right? So Every yeah, room. I just. I want to get out of this uh, this area and start making my my way back up to uh, control. Yeah, this is so the I main transportation here. Yeah, I can have eyes and ears all over the entire ship, right? Yep. Lieutenant, if you have any orders to relay, I can begin working on such a thing. I'm like like follow like walking behind him with like a, a pad mm -hmm. out, basically. Might be yeah. better, Caleb, if you uh, you go planet or you go station side with the sergeant as men. This thing doesn't so. seem to have any interest in you, considering that you're not a, you know, human. You're probably not susceptible to any sort of airborne contagion, anything like that. So if you could be my eyes and ears on the station, that would be helpful. I understand, sir. I will try to avoid contaminating any biological matter that is a... Covering my case. Oh, like head off. Right. Mm -hmm. A little bit dejected. Yeah, right. And yeah, uh, Lasky will make his way with uh, Lee, I guess, back up to the, yep. the bridge. Yeah. As you're walking, Lee's just, what do you think that stuff is? Hell if I fucking know. I'm going to call in, try and radio out to uh, Central Command, see if they have any advice. Take a couple hours to get to them, but... We should hear back within a few. Sounds like a plan. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then I just kind of like stop and just Lee. Yeah. If anything goes south, we can't let any of those soldiers back on this ship. He 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 looks away and then looks back at you with very knowing eyes. Understood, Lieutenant. Right. That means forcibly or otherwise. Understood. So you should make your way 
Yeah, if get I whoever uh, where we have left on the ship. Go to the guns locker. Yes. Arm everybody. And at a moment's notice, if we need to, be prepared to defend the ship. That won't be necessary. The shipboard weaponry and auto turrets will paste anything human size. Fair enough. Right. Uh, sir, if I might suggest you head to the lieutenant's cockpit and get his override commands. Yeah, I'm going to have to consult the ship AI for that, right? Get everything we said. Mm -hmm. Shit. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll be there. Just radio me if you need anything and fucking turn this shit off. Like the, the, the yeah, alarm. Yeah, 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 the klaxons. Mm -hmm. Find a way to turn this off. I'll find a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, yeah, just, yeah, I just, I'll start heading towards the uh, lieutenant's uh, station. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're starting off toward the lieutenant's station. And basically all of you are outfitted with a very simple uh, life sign relay system where the uh, the command protocol, which is kind of a separate system that's just built into every ship with a relay, uh, will know when someone has died. So it's basically an automatic way of giving rank if, if someone dies in the field, that sort of thing. So yeah, nice. you head to the cockpit. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's a procedure, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah. Um, and Caleb, what are, you, what are you doing exactly? You were being sent onto the station? Yes, I'm going to go accompany the, um, the sort of, I guess, you know, so the squads who are getting suited up in the um, uh, hazardous sort of environment suits. Yep. Um, and I'll be accompanying them, basically acting as the person communicating back to the ship. Everything that they're sort of nice. seeing and everything. Yeah. So the Enviro suits, uh, they they would just be called Enviro suits. Yeah. Uh, are not. They don't look like space suits because they're not. They they look a lot more like hazmat suits. They're pretty much vacuum sealed silicone body gloves, mm -hmm. basically that are built to be able to be fitted over combat armor. Yeah. Nice. But they're they're just weird. I'm sure. They're weird. Yeah. Like um they they work off a system where basically they will self heal. Over, over a period of many, many hours. But uh, if if they get a breach, um, they have an automatic pressurized system so they can deal with localized breaches. Nice. So yeah. I'm sure they're bulky and weird to deal with though as a oh, soldier. Yeah. yeah, even even though even though it's this sort of pseudo body glove, um, they have basically these uh, basically filter packs that they wear on the front and back. That pretty much make you look like Darth Vader, except hmm. just not nearly as cool. Yeah, if you're wearing it, way more um, cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. But uh, way that's, more super duper yeah. rad. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, you are uh, fuck Lasik Lasky. Why do I keep calling you Lasik? Sorry. Lasky, you are heading back up. You're heading up to the lieutenant's cockpit. And uh, as you get there, again, a lot of the men in the hallway have come, have gone to the transport bay, the main transport bay. So that hallway is empty. Uh, you basically take the hatch up to the lieutenant's cockpit. And in there, there's just a small puddle of blood on the floor. Yeah, it's kind of like step over it. Yeah. And, and uh, besides, yeah, I'll sit down. Yeah, you you go to sit down, and you start looking over the uh, the control panels and the main ship computer, and you notice something really really odd. The ship computer seems like the screen itself seems almost slightly discolored. Like if you if you could imagine a computer screen that has been punched, it looks a bit like that. The thing is, you aren't sure whether that was the lieutenant's impact or something else. Because this room is like military-grade glass and steel. So it wouldn't show a break. The computer might. But, don't know. Mm. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, so I just start, like, uh, I sit down, I'll start typing at a few things, and then just mm -hmm. 
uh, you know, speak to the speak to the AI. Just mother, initiate override for command. Lieutenant Everett, deceased. Override command accepted. Welcome, right. Lieutenant Lasky. Yeah, this is Lasky. Password two two four seven two four. Uh, punch that in. I want uh, immediate access to every single system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The the mother intelligence on your ship, it's more of a virtual intelligence than an AI. Um, so it's more similar to a braked AI, but it, can, mm-hmm. it, it helps with automatic tracking and stuff. And yeah, it gives you just about everything you need. Um, but as you are sort of letting the computer do its thing, um, there comes a point where there's just, there's almost like a delay in a command you give. And this is state-of-the-art military hardware, so that just shouldn't happen. Like, you give the command uh, medical protocol, uh, Alpha Sigma, you know, uh, full authority, stuff like that. And the response should be protocol accepted. But Mm -hmm. it takes about 15 seconds before anything is said. Um. Mother, check for interior data leak. You're running a bit sluggish. Protocol accepted. Running interior data check. (sighs) Shit. And it's it's just, it hangs a little bit. Uh, I just click on the comms and I go to uh, engineering. This is uh, Second uh, Lieutenant Lasky. Come in. You hear uh, from the engineering room. The engineering room is an incredibly small place, by mm-hmm. the way. It's almost like it's just a shaft in front of the engines. Uh, you hear a little bit of static, uh, but you hear it slowly fading away and a voice coming up. Hi, Lieutenant. Right. Uh, mother is having... Uh, I don't know. It might be caused by a power surge. She's having stuttering. Um, I would like you to uh, bypass everything, uh, every system that is on currently. I'd like you to do a full system uh, uh, reset. We can do that. All right. But uh, currently, we're having some pretty severe difficulties with the the backward systems of the ship, uh, the, 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 the engines, fuel compartments. They're inaccessible to us. In- inaccessible physically we, we we can't get the hatches open they won't budge it seems like negative pressurization inside of the quarters i can try to fix it but it would take welding equipment well you have access to whatever you need that's all if i don't have if we don't have it here then let me relay to the sergeant that if they find any equipment that should be their first priority is to get that to us because we need mother up and running otherwise this whole thing is a shit show i i can uh, I'll, I'll start a full system reset but i can't make any promises full system reset right uh eta on how long that's going to uh be in effect over uh two and a half minutes at best 25 at worst right well, at this rate, I'm going to plan for 25. So I'll uh, announce to the ship that we might go dark for 25. That means no shields, uh, no cooling, no anything. That also means anybody inside of a tight space, i.e. yourself, get a breathe unit, please. I don't need anybody passing out. Over. Right. I'll do that. This is Lasky out. Give me any sort of situational uh, this situation update as they happen. You got it. Engineering out. Yeah, you heard clear. Uh, Sergeant Caleb, we are doing a full system reset uh, for mother's sake. Something's wrong. Uh, That means that we may be out of uh, comms contact for at worst 25 minutes. So don't be alarmed. All right. Um, But should I should I still keep the three squads out? Only get the three squads out that you wanted out or you want everyone out? Uh, that's the best thing. Get the three squads out. Environmental suits only. Nobody right. without an environmental suit is supposed to be out there. Is that understood? If you can, I need you to go to uh, any sort of uh, supply areas that they have. If they have any sort of heavy-duty welding equipment, uh, if you could 
get that, retrieve it, bring it back. That would be most appreciated. We're having some difficulties with the hull. We might have to do uh, some repairs. I don't think we have the equipment for it. I'll try and find hmm. something, sir. Also, be on the lookout for more environmental suits because it, it just in case of a full ship evacuation, I don't want to be out in the water without a life jacket. You got I'll it. I'll prepare for disconnect from Mother soon. Perfect. Yep. It gave me updates on anything, and I mean even if a fly lands on you, I want to know exactly what's happening out there. That's my specialty, Lieutenant. Right. As soon as the reset happens, I'm going to be sending out a distress call to command, see what their advice is for this. Tell them, just play it cool, try and figure out what's happening out there, and try not to engage on any insurgents just yet. I'll pass that on to the crew, Captain. Perfect. Lasky out. And uh, I just start lighting up a cigarette, and I'm just looking at all these yeah. monitors that are, you know, lagging and doing their thing. Like, Yeah, like a couple of them are doing that thing where they're shifting frames, but you can see them stuck in the frame shift. There are like three different frames on screen at once that are just like crackling, basically, in the display. And it just looks disgusting. Mm. Like, this is hell. What in the hell is happening to you? Yeah. Ah. Uh, Ah, uh, Lieutenant. This is Lasky. Full system reset in 10 seconds. Roger. All right. Eight, seven, six, five. You notice a couple lights start turning off. Four, three, two. Caleb, you start just kind of feeling and in your mind, uh, feeling the connection start disconnecting between you and mother. Mm-hmm. One, Shut down. And the ship basically whirs to a halt. To nothingness. And now that the klaxon has stopped ringing, this other just kind of strange static picks up almost. And Is there it's any light? Very strange. Uh, there are effectively emergency lighting. Um, so there are these very, very low level, uh, low energy red lights that span the ship. And uh, you are in the captain's cockpit. All the consoles are off. Everything is shut down. There is one strip of red light above you illuminating the room. And Caleb... Um, you feel all the connections disappear. They're gone. Uh, however, you probably at first become aware of some manner of radio signal. Uh, and then you as well, Lasky, this is your personal comms, which is basically hooked into the same frequency as the ship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah well, we have it. We have individual comm units, so it's, it's just the, our wide range is cut out right now, right? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, you get a communication on the ship channel, basically what the lieutenant would get if he were patched directly into ship-to-ship comms. Mm. And uh, there is this heavy static that seems to be blasting through this thing, and it slowly lowers until it is only a massive nuisance rather than deafening. And it seems to be almost like on this stop and go. Anytime it stops, you seem to get a word here and there, just small ones. When it stops, the first time it stops for you as it starts coming in, help it! Then it goes back to static. The next stop, why? The next stop, no! And then it cuts off. Yeah, I, I, I immediately start working on trying to basically um, trace where that signal seconds. was coming from, essentially. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say. I was gonna say. Um, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say to Caleb, figure out what comm yeah. unit that was. Yeah, Already so Caleb, you have you have the luxury of having a computer in your head, so yeah. you start and, just and, uh, and a more powerful mm-hmm. one in my suitcase. 
Exactly. Yeah. You basically have this very thin tablet that acts as the same power as a very powerful computer. Mm -hmm. And you wrench that out. You start throwing up some displays of uh, your working knowledge of the station. You don't have full scans that the ship had. Uh, you had the last scans you took, yep. but not, not super recent ones. And what you get, the location of the last frequency was seemingly the comms room of strut A of the station. I I move away from like the other soldiers <laughs> so they can't hear mm -hmm. the, the communication and I'm just like Lieutenant, it appears that that frequency was coming from strut A. Perhaps our journey there is null and void. It might be prudent to perform another life form scan once power gets back. It wasn't one of ours. Fortunately not, sir. Fuck. Though... I don't know how they gained access to... Don't worry, sir. What the fuck? Unknown comms. This is 2nd Lieutenant Lasky of the VS Dauntless. You're breaking up. You get nothing in response? We could check it out in person, sir. Sergeant? Yes, Lieutenant? I want you to form up two squads. Start heading towards A. Sounded like a distress call. Might have been from some of the, uh, the station's personnel. I need you to figure out what's going on. You got it, Lieutenant. <clears throat> Full combat gear, I presume. Right. All right. Standard rules apply. Shoot if shot at. Standard engagement. Of course. Would you like me to head over too, sir? Yeah, I need you there. I need you to figure out exactly where this comm came from. You're able to pinpoint those types of things, right? Yes. Perfect. Don't get yourself shot. I'll try my best. I'll relay any information that I find useful. Perfect. I want you to send the last squad, Sergeant, and uh, I want you to try and find some sort of storage locker. I want more environmental suits right now. We're on it, Lieutenant. All right, you heard him. Crack my knuckles and just... Uh, at this point, I'm, like, chain-smoking cigarettes out of stress. Yeah, you're, are you still in the, the, the Lieutenant's cockpit? Yes. Yeah, you, there's this... You've, like, lit up, you've lit up, like, a second cigarette and your first one isn't even done, and you're just like... Shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah like, I mean, what the fuck is wrong with me? You still just flick it into the puddle of blood that's still on the floor. Yeah. It doesn't smell very good in here, but no. private. So, uh, Caleb, are you to be accompanying them? The uh, group of two squads heading over to yes. uh, Strut A. Yes, I am. All right. So. Uh... You start uh, heading over to the two squads that are suiting up, getting armed, lock and loaded, and the sergeant, the sergeant major, seems to be heading them up. Uh, both squads have their respective sergeants. One of them is uh, Squad Baker, with mm -hmm. within which are the people that you mostly know, um, Caleb, mm -hmm. and probably one of the more. Uh, friendly to you, if I'm t not bold and not, not too bold yeah, to say, is sure. uh, Warren. Yeah. Yeah, amongst them. And you notice uh, Warren... Well, what what is Warren having a difficulty with, if anything? Uh, Warren is uh, just... The environmental suit is a uh, is a one size sort of fits all. Yep. And uh, Warren is a smaller framed guy. He's not super big, so yeah. he, the gloves are kind of not like they're too big. Yep. And like the boots are kind of too big, so his suit's kind of like saggy and weird on him. Yep. It doesn't fit exactly right, and it's making it awkward for him to hold his rifle. Yeah. So that's uh, that is Warren right now. Sergeant Baker is currently dealing with uh, the other men when he starts to uh, 
see you, Caleb. Yeah, I'm, I'm heading. Yeah, I'm heading towards him. Nice. Yeah, uh, he is fully in his suit, and he looks over. Guess you won't be needing one of these, huh? I should be okay, provided that the contaminant is more focused on actual organs as opposed to just flesh. Okay. Uh, well, uh, sir, fall in. Sir, if I may make a suggestion. War, Warren, can you... Warren, hit the vacuum button. Uh, it's on the back, third button on the right, low. I, I go over I, I, and like just, yeah, just, I go yeah. over and like help him reach it because it's yeah. like yeah. kind of awkward like, this, for him to get to. This button's not on the front because this is a button you only have to press once. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is very weird if you don't know where it is. So yeah, you you go yeah. over and you don't and you don't want to hit it by accident either. Like they exactly, around. yeah, exactly. So yeah, you go over and you know exactly which button. Uh, you go ahead and. The suit, though it has some wrinkles all over because of your size, uh, conforms. Okay, yeah, I mean, it's like... Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, <sighs> and uh, Warren just walks over to one of the supply crates and uh, he yeah. grabs a... What's essentially... Have you ever seen, like, a a, like a, a, uh, a vest that, like, a reporter would wear in wartime? Sort of just, like, a bulletproof yep. sort of vest. It, it's obviously civilian grade, but it's, mm -hmm. like, it's just for that purpose like he just grabs it and just like extends it out to Caleb oh you might want to wear that yes you're right it slipped my mind I like pick it up and start putting it on, it on uh while heading over to the sergeant I'm just like sergeant Baker um should I begin issuing protocols to have the doors lowered <sighs> he looks to sergeant major irons Irons uh, is currently talking to the other squad sergeant. Looks over to your squad. Y'all locked and loaded. Sergeant Baker nods. I'm like doing up like one side of the of the vest straps. Of the yeah, vest. And yeah. I like, Warren, look, I like, look over at Warren. At his, oh, sorry. Warren looks down at his rifle and like and then just like unclicks the safety. Yep. You know, like he realizes that it was on and then just <laughs> yeah. yeah and then uh yeah and then it just nods. Yeah, I was Baker, just about to say like, I just like nod at Warren way. while I like finish yep. off putting on the vest. Yeah. Um, you two are pretty familiar with your squad, but at this point, like, this isn't a military op. You're not expecting to have to do really complex maneuvers or call-outs or anything. This is just breach and clear style, if it comes to that. Yeah, Sergeant Baker and uh, the other sergeant line up uh, with your squads, all in enviro suits, and the basically ramp starts to lower mm -hmm. and uh, we can see a couple of men just kind of watch as it begins lowering it has to be lowered manually because the ship I was going to say manual yeah. yeah yep so basically the hydraulic uh, spouts that hook it onto the ship itself are currently being lowered by basically the steel wire pulley from the inside of the ship and it is being lowered uh, by basically half a dozen men and it as it hits the floor of the hangar bay mm -hmm. and you guys notice this very crisp very well lit hangar bay before you mm. with many many a small ship cruiser maybe a, a one man vessel strewn about in various parking spaces that would be considered such on a station like this Hmm. Everything and is increasingly you, quiet when I'm disconnected from Mother. I like sort of mindlessly say, "I'm I'm near Warren, but not like directly to him." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as as the ramp has opened fully, uh, by the way, there is that that static that I mentioned before becomes just a little more apparent at the edge of your periphery, everyone. Um, but it's just something it seems to be in the com pad, like jamming could be doing it. And as you all exit, those of you who are exiting, the ramp starts to uh, go back up. And very much slower than when it went down, of course. Everyone outside the ship, there's nothing moving in here. 
incredibly quiet. And you could probably hear a pin drop. Even inside these suits. How dark is it in the station? Oh, it's it's incredibly well lit. Nice. Everything, all the power is on. Good. I just what you can tell. Yeah. almost um, like disregarding any danger. I go over to, because we're sort of in the, the hangar, right? Yep. I start making my way over to essentially uh, a terminal or um, sort of any, any sort of like computer system next to the big hangar door. And I'm, I'm going to try and like see if it's on and see if I can start accessing the door. Yeah. Like, like As without guess, without uh, any concern uh-huh. for, like, separating myself from, like, these, I got these squads of armed men. Yeah, I feel you. You start making your way over to uh, one of the many sort of maintenance slash control consoles that are mostly meant for the staff uh, that you head over. And as you guys start to separate yourselves from the ship, you hear from loudspeakers, Welcome to Eid... D- d- on station and just this tone comes through holding on that N and then it stops just cuts out very abruptly with a with a very precise and it's silent once again other than the clattering of feet Sergeant Baker uh, turns to his squad as you guys start ranging in the direction that Caleb is walking toward one of the consoles. Keep alert. We don't know where these things, where these insurgents and, well, whatever the fuck else has gone on with this place are. So just keep an eye out. Uh, Warren, as you're walking along with your squad. Uh, the two squads are separating slightly just to kind of range out, cover more ground. Uh, you pass very close by to what appears to be a luxury uh, one-seater spacecraft. Okay. And your eyes are just drawn to the cockpit. And you think for a second that you see someone in it. Uh, you, it, it seems like there's a person. In it. Just just by looking, like, if you could imagine you're walking up from behind a car on one side, you see someone as though yeah. it were with that vision. So I would just kind of, like, stop, and if there's mm-hmm. any soldiers next to me, I would just look and just nod over at it, and I just raise my, raise my rifle up. Yeah. And uh, just kind of, like, rush to the, uh, to the, the, you know, the window, yep. essentially. Yeah. I'm still yeah. just like walking forwards, like of not you're having making realized. a beeline. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Sergeant Sergeant Baker kind of holds a fist up after you've peeled off to the rest of the the squad, and uh, yeah, you you're able to peel like two men off the squad as you approach. Once you get to the craft, you start walking around. Your rifle pointed toward the glass in the cockpit, and. You think you see a hand and arm. It's what gave you the idea it was a person in the cockpit before you go around. And it looks like a rubber chicken. As you get right up next to the window, you notice it's simply tinted due to the glass. And it only looked like an arm as you were walking up to it. Never mind. That's negative. (laughs) Yeah, the two men behind you. <sighs> Fucking Warren. Mm. They start walking away. I just like um, take one last like look inside and just kind of like exhale. Yep. Yeah. You you think you see a a cup in a cup holder? This is a luxury cockpit. I should, as I mentioned before, it's a luxury yeah. ship. A cup in a cup holder uh, with a dark liquid in it. Otherwise, it's all pretty standard fare. Very nice upholstery, things like that. Mm. Yeah, so I just like look at it one last time, just and uh, I will join ranks with the uh, with the the rest of my squad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you join back up, um, Sergeant Baker. As you guys sort of regroup, he turns his head in your direction. What was it? Uh, thought I saw somebody in the uh, cockpit of the vehicle, sir. It, it, it was nothing. Just right, a we'll distortion be... of the uh, tinted windows. Good for checking. Right. Keep alert. 
course. As you are. Yeah. Keep a lookout. How? And, how? Uh, What's the condition of uh-huh. this place? It looks fantastic. Um, it looks as though it's just another day in the hangar. Uh, other than the fact, other than your ship, which seems to have like created a very small localized crater in yeah. the hull, in a bulkhead, basically. Um, all of these ships are properly in their parking spaces, and it doesn't look like this thing has undergone any kind of massive like shifts. Uh, it doesn't there doesn't seem to be any like massive amount of debris anywhere or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. Well, like while I'm still in the you know the earshot of the sergeant, just sir, if you don't mind my saying, I I just find it odd that <clears throat> if the station was hit by an invading force, which is what the intel suggests. Why nobody tried to run? Look at all the look at all the crafts, all parked in order. License plates alphabetical. It's like nobody even tried to leave. Uh, yeah, Sergeant Baker just seems like he's at a loss for words. Then you hear the comm click on, uh, seemingly from Sergeant Major Irons. Mm. Remember, son, there's a full scale lockdown in place. No one in, no one out. Right. Good good observation, though. Keep those eyes useful. Yeah, I just kind of, like, start to get shudders. And um, at this point, uh, I'm a little spooked. I'm actually going to roll on the uh, the insanity, insanity meter. Yeah. Okay. By all means. Roll a 1d6? Uh, yeah. Basically, if you get a 1, it goes up. Okay. Yeah. So you're... Basically, what that means, uh, anytime you roll insanity, you don't yes. get over it so much as you keep your cool. Basically. Okay. So I'm on yeah. edge now. So I'm You're not right. at one yet. I'm just at, am I at one? Yes. You guys start at yeah. one. We're, we're, we're still at our starting. Yeah. For now. Yep. Okay. For now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the sergeant pulls you all forward. And as soon as Caleb, you get to a uh, console, he stops everyone. And it starts to basically take up observation positions. Caleb, what do you want to do with this console? So yeah, uh, on, it's on my, standard fare. On my way, I'm really... It's It's been... Probably in the last year, I haven't been disconnected from Mother at any point. Um, uh-huh. So all the thoughts and, like, sort of processing that would usually be sort of transmitted and sent uh, to the sort of the master AI um, are just sort of, like, being, coming out out loud in, like, mutterings and stuff. So as I'm making my way over, I'm just like, it's odd that their senses are still working and everything is in right order and the liquid, it seemed to, like, and just, like, basically, like, all, all my posturing and everything's, like, coming out loud. And I eventually get yeah. to the system and, like, continue, like, typing and tapping away, like, touch typing while my eyes are sort of, like, drifting uh, as I'm yeah. sort of, like, pondering all these things. Yeah. I feel that. Okay. And I keep, so, I probably keep coming back yeah. to the same thought of like it's really quite quite quiet when I'm disconnected from mother. Like every now and then, I just repeat that same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I'm still here, by the way. I'm just gonna change shirts. I'm fucking dying. It's so hot in my yeah. room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go That's for fine. it, dude. Um, so Caleb. Uh, yeah, what is it exactly you are trying to do using this console? So there's the sort of... You said um, when we were arriving, mm-hmm. we just saw the doors closing as if they were, like, shutting on something. Just as we... Ju- yeah. Like, just as we arrived, right? Yes. So essentially, seemingly. I'm trying to, um, with this console, gain access to cameras of the other side, if mm-hmm. at all possible. And then if I see everything's clear, I relay that, and then I'm going to try and open the doors, essentially. Okay, so you want to get access to cameras. Yes, Okay, cool. Go ahead and give me a 2d6. Okay. As you start basically fiddling with the operating system, trying to break uh, the security measures. I'm going to roll an extra d6 as well. Insanity? Okay. Yeah, just because I really want to succeed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good thing you did too! <laughs> wow. So. Nice. Uh, uh, me... Another d6. Yes, please. Okay. So, Caleb, this is what happens. Um, you basically, because with an AI, when you interact with a computer in this way, you have some options. Um, if it is a wireless capable computer, which is almost, which is 99.99% of computing. Everybody's like, asking for mechanisms. nudes now. <laughs> uh, basically, you have the option always of connecting your uh, consciousness to the computer. 
to basically get a very mundane uh, interactive method yeah. to work with the software. It's like a video and game when you go into the mini game. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's like it's like going to virtual reality. Um, so you you plug yourself into the computer in a sense, but you don't have to plug anything in, and you just start uh, working with it. And as you do so, you flip over to the camera system, and you actually get seemingly the full array of cameras. And as soon as you do so, as soon as you feel yourself connect with the system, you feel something enter your consciousness. Just a blip of data that almost gets past you. And you just basically do a run of all of the processes going through. There doesn't seem to be any anomalies, but something's wrong. I, I'm... There doesn't appear to be anything on on, on the feed. Yeah, um, Irons kind of looks over at the display, and there are no cameras on the display because you have a display in your head, yep. basically. I'm just, like, staring down at the ground, past him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you throw something on the console for me? Give me something to work with. Y yes, sir. Should I try and open the doors? I, I like, throw it up as I, as I say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you throw it up. And you kind of notice this because you're you're conscious of your surroundings while you're in this sort of digital space. Yeah. Um, you notice that there is very slight pixelation in the image you throw up, and you think in your head, "Huh, I don't remember compressing this." Yeah. Yeah. And the sergeant I, looks at it. I, I think that something might be wrong with their cameras, like with our computer system, sir. Hmm. <sighs> might very well be right, but it does look clear. Alright, see if you can get those doors open. Un understood, sir. I, like, basically just yeah. uh, send the send the message without, like, typing yeah. anything just because I'm connected up to it now. Now, does, 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 are those little stutters coming out as sort of a human stutter, or as a almost robotic stutter? Human. Because, human? Cool. Because okay, I yeah. am, then because, because I am lying. Uh, nice. Which is something that I have not really gotten used to uh, at all gotcha gotcha yeah uh so you not good. we got a lying ai guys <laughs> best kind yeah you attempt to tap into the door control go ahead uh yep. 2d6 okay i can i'm just gonna trust in my 2d6 this time i don't want to be any actually yeah fuck it we need to get this door open i'm gonna i'm gonna roll the 3d6 for jingles Yep. Okay. <laughs> so I needed nah, that. I, was... <laughs> I needed that one. What? <laughs> what? That's amazing. I, I wish I was playing D and D now, guys. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jesus. I know you would have roasted. Fuck. All let's, right. I mean, let's roll the last one. Hey. All right. Yeah. Barely. Barely not. Yeah. So. God damn it. You delve deeper into the computer system, and you just kind of double check all of your internal firewalls as you're doing so, and. You actually feel a couple more pings, a little like the one that seemed to uh, get into your system uh, from the station system. But this is all just while there is this torrent of data, you're just spitting at it to try to okay, break so did, did, the security. Did, did my insanity go up then or no? It did not. Okay, cool. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's me describing how like you yeah, are keeping your cool, basically. Yep. So... You get into the door, the door system uh, perfectly. You instantly have access to just about every door in this station. I should be able to open all the doors from now on, sir. All right, that's uh, that's good to know. Well, why don't you start with these? He just nods up to some that are uh, basically on this raised platform that spans the entire hangar, leading up to from stairs. Of, of course, sir. And I try and open one, and I, like, the first time, I, I like, open my eyes, and the hangar doors aren't open, because mm -hmm. I've opened the wrong set of doors, okay. just out of, just out of being distracted. Like, like, yeah. this, this one, this one's listed, like, 33C, and I'm opening, like, 30, uh, 33B by accident, so I've opened, like, the yeah. hangar doors, like, one of the other, um, 
sectors. Uh, one moment, sir. Apologies. All right. And then, uh, like, 15 seconds later, I send the command through to open the correct set of doors. Yeah, they open up. Uh, very slowly. Very ponderously, almost. And as they open, it's kind of weird. As they open, one of the lights on the ceiling turns off. One of the probably 100 big white lamps just shuts off. And everyone looks at it. Right, um, there appears to be something wrong with their systems. I'm sure that's why the footage was such bad quality and why it took me longer than usual to access the doors. I, I wouldn't think anything more of it, sir. All right, well, let's let's get moving. Shit's getting weird. Come on. Sides. I don't really mind if we're delayed a bit longer. I don't really give two shits about that Lasky son bitch. Um, he said that just over, just yeah, not even just over comms at all. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Baker just kind of cocks his head at him, raises an eyebrow, but shakes his head. And you guys start on your way, uh, if you're following the sergeants, up the stairs. Yep. Yeah, you guys are a, a crew at this point, um, everyone outside the ship. It's about 14 people. Nice. Um, yeah. You guys are... Moving right along. Uh, you start going up the stairs and uh, through the door you've just opened. Nothing moves again. No no noise other than this just pervading, very, very low-level static. And as you guys go through the doors, you see a long hallway. This is seemingly a hallway that leads between hangars. Mm -hmm. You can assume that there is a branch, a T-junction, that will lead you toward the central hall. Yeah. And you would know this because you have maps in your head of this place. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm leading um, probably yeah. like Sergeant Baker forward first. Yeah. Yeah, you're leading Sergeant Baker and Baker squad. Um, Sergeant Major is alongside Baker mm -hmm. up front. The other squad's taking the rear. And as you guys are going, you think you can hear something. Just this noise that almost seems to be emanating from the ceiling. It takes you a few moments to just gauge all this. Um, is, is anybody else getting that? <laughs> yeah, a couple of the men are just kind of cocking their ears up. Like, it seems that, seems that a lot of people can hear that. Good. Uh, it, it almost seems like movement in uh, a ventilation shaft above you guys. Okay. Can I make... Yeah. I don't know if this would be a check or if you can just uh -huh. tell me. Uh, does this sound like movement like people moving in a, in ventilation shafts has the very distinctive noise of, you know, like arm, arm, like leg, yeah, like, I know like the thumping, whereas if this yeah, was yeah, yeah. something uh, like falling or sliding like... down uh, a ventilation yeah. shaft or something like that, I could... Um, could I make a, any sort of check to see if I could discern? Yes. Or... Um, yeah, yeah. That would be simply a D6, uh, unless you wanted to use the test your sanity. Sure, I've been <laughs> doing good with it thus far. All right. Um. Fuck it out. What the fuck? Oh I think, my god. I, think it, uh, nice. I just need to. I just need to stop using my sanity now. Really. Yeah. Oh my god. What? Well. Why? You are. Doing Why? fine. So, basically, your acoustic, oh, your internal. Sorry, I'm gonna have to go today. for a second. I think it's probably a that's fine. Thing. I'm really sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Warren, you you turn around and see Caleb start to look up, uh, just at the ceiling, and you you can hear this too. It's the sound of some thing or some just this noise, seemingly coming from above you guys. And when you look up, you distinctly see right above you. Mm. A ventilation grate. I, I'm just gonna kind of step to the side of it, like. Uh -huh. Yeah, as you step to the side, the noise, though it's pretty quiet, it seems to be pretty close at the same time. And you actually see something, something you don't know. The light doesn't 
doesn't pierce the uh, the thickness of the grate. But you do see movement on the other side. Something move across. How quickly? Not too quickly. Um, you hear, you simply hear something creaking against that grate, and an yeah. event itself. Uh, yeah, I let it. I let it pass, and just look around to see if anybody else. Yeah. Notice that. Yeah. The sergeant major and the sergeants hold up or holding up their rifles. Everyone else kind of follows suit. Not at the vents per se, but just at the ready. Yeah. Basically. And uh, Caleb, still pointing an ear up. I'm so sorry. Uh, is, that's fine, dude. Uh, is going to have something to say, I think. Uh, Caleb, yeah, you are listening up, and you know without a shadow of a doubt, uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that that is a person making very measured movements, probably trying to stay hidden, silent. It would appear there's a person moving through the ventilation shaft. There aren't any nano cameras up there, so I can't get a view, but it sounds as if they're trying to keep their sounds muted. Perhaps whatever this thing is, it responds to the sound. Uh, yeah, after after that first couple words, yeah. there seems to be something trying to be, yeah, the sound stops, and the sergeant major, hey, if there's someone in there, go back to the grate and come down now. We may be able to help. You you now hear, since obviously this person is known, his presence, uh, you start to hear some panting. I... I... I don't... I don't think anyone can help. Uh, I'll come down, but you must promise you won't hurt me. I look towards the sergeant, since that's not a call I can make when I'm surrounded by mm -hmm. soldiers. Yeah, the major, the sergeant major, yeah. looks to you, looks up. Are you armed? No. No. Not anymore. Do they mm. sound? This voice sounds like it's out, like it's on the other side of the galactic border, right? The accent. Maybe. <laughs> the accent is uh, not one endemic to uh, the core. Yeah, I was going to say this doesn't sound mm -hmm. like somebody from the core. To Warren me. would probably know this most distinctly because because Warren seems like kind of a country boy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just kind of like I just click on the comms really quickly and just. Sir, I think that might be one of the insurgents. Yeah, the sergeant major actually writes his rifle toward the grate and uh, simply glances at you and looks at a spot on the ground, basically on the other side of him. Uh, he's on one side of the grate. Yeah, so I'll just kind of like move over. Yep, you I'll, come I'll over the rest over of the squad. And then, yeah, have my, rifle, yeah. have my rifle pointed up. The rest of the squad starts just creating this small perimeter. Uh, the squad's and you see the grate above you start to get pushed out slowly, but surely. And uh, someone tumbles out. They are wearing a red vest, uh, just brown coveralls, and very simple attire otherwise. They don't seem terribly unkempt, uh, but they have long hair, uh, beard, and mustache and a sort of slightly browner skin tone. Mm -hmm. This this is not a uh, a race endemic to the core. And as soon as he, he falls out, yeah, you you notice that um, he actually seems to be he seems to be wearing a bandolier that oh, is yeah. bereft of clips. Yeah. Uh, and he as soon as he falls to the ground, he <sighs> he starts raising his hands slowly. I'm not armed. I, uh, I swear it. I. Ah. Uh, yeah. yeah, the sergeant major takes a step forward. Who are you? I am. I am one of the group that attacked this station. Yeah, and the sergeant major. Thank you for making it easy for us. We appreciate it. Now, what's the situation? Since you seem so willing to talk, the man starts to raise his head somewhat, looks directly into the Sergeant Major's eyes. 
They're all dead. Everyone is is dead. All we were trying to. I'm sorry. Just the members of your insurgents. No, everyone. I have been crawling these vents for maybe an hour now, maybe more. I can't. I can't remember how long it's been. But I passed over the the central strut of the station. Supposedly, that's where all of the well, the majority of the survivors were. I. Oh, his eyes just widen. I can't explain what I saw. I can't. I. Yeah, the sergeant major just like points his gun at the man now. He wasn't pointing it before. Listen, you are only useful to us when you are talking about things that matter. So keep talking. Okay. One, one moment, Sergeant Major. There is a form of use that he may still fulfill. If... If his body looks darkened by the matter... May I inspect uh, him? Go ahead. Don't try anything, boy. Yeah, you kneel down to inspect him. How are you inspecting him? So, I saw... First off, I'm looking at his clothes. It doesn't look like um anything that he's wearing is from here, right? Um, they could... It could be from anywhere. Okay. His, his clothing. It's just but, very but generic it, uh, workers' Yeah, cloth. it just... Okay. Yeah, uh, I was just... The, the reason clothing. I was asking... Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll look mm -hmm. around uh, at, at, like, the first layer of clothes first, I guess, then, to see okay. if any of it is darkened, like the guy's glove. Because I know this stuff goes through clothes, so... Okay, yeah. Uh, if, it, if, it looks like, if it looks like mm -hmm. anything is, like, brand sparkly new, um, like, like, it would be just taken from somewhere on this ship, I would assume that he's, like, trying to cover something up, so we'll look like underneath there yeah. but other than that i will just check like surface level clothes and stuff yeah give me a d6 okay um i'm gonna try and increase this <laughs> using an insanity die because okay man who takes risks <laughs> and then Damn. i roll another d6 for yes. the insanity wow you're a fucking AI, dude. You're yeah. insane. You're a fucking AI. I'm not, uh, I'm so, not insane. I'm, I'm completely know, right? sane. So, you start looking this guy up and down very closely. Um, you don't have, like, the cutting-edge ocular implants that some of your other mechanical brethren do, but even still, you have a very powerful internal computer, and you just start processing visual data. And this guy is dirty as hell. But you try to match imagery of the doctor's glove and his clothing. Mm -hmm. And you can't seem to find a match. It would appear he's clean, sir. Which is odd, considering how much the matter liked the vents on our ship. That's strange. Hmm. So... What's what's going on, boy? You have any idea? Did you do this? You and your lot? Hmm? No. No. I, I don't think so. I... I hope not. I just... Hmm. He starts to stand up and put his hands at his sides. Uh, just lower them slowly. And, uh... Warren, you'd probably get the inkling to take a step back. The sergeant does that. The the sergeant major. Yeah, yeah. If he, if he starts to put his hands down, I actually point my gun at him. I wasn't pointing my gun at him before. Uh-huh. Yeah, the sergeant major now, um, like, actually sizes up with his gun, aims, and, like, you stop right there! I'll put one between your eyes. And you see another, uh, you see another sergeant, the, not Baker, 
um, kind of take a couple paces away and say something into his calm, and the sergeant major just, I don't care. Um, you, Warren, get the just very short quip. Just be careful when firing these halls. Bolts will ricochet like nothing. Hmm. And do you do anything, Warren, in that moment? Or are you simply pointing your gun at him? Um, if if it's uh, if I get the the inkling that uh, that the sergeant is going to shoot this guy, um, I am going to. Uh, how close is Caleb to me? Caleb was right next to the guy, yep. so okay. pretty close to you, five feet. So I'd like to I'd like to uh, tackle Caleb. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you go to tackle Caleb, and um, Caleb, are you going to resist this? Um, I don't think so. I think more out of like shock, okay. I'll probably just like get knocked over. Yep, cool. Yeah, so as you jump, um, the man starts standing up and seems to take a step in the direction of the sergeant major. One shot pff, rings out. You instantly see the man. Uh, actually, actually, you're you're jumping into Caleb. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, your 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 efforts and your perceptions totally focused on him getting him to the floor. Mm-hmm. But you hear a bullet shot ring out. You hear someone shout, and then a group of shouts. Um, you hear something hit the floor, mm. and you guys uh, you guys start standing up. You and Caleb. Once again, dust yourselves off a little bit, probably. Yeah, uh, his but how is his body like metallic? Who's Caleb's? Yeah, because um, I, I, I can imagine like I jumped on you and then it's like oh fuck like like I like, think it's you like know, like it would have hurt. I think it's like hitting one of those like uh, one of those toys that's meant to have that it's like fluffy on the outside. Then it has like mechanical moving parts. So yeah, there's the yeah. inside where the, like the battery's kept. It's like hit, trying to hit one of those. So like you yeah. get you get yeah. past the fluffy part and then you hit like the sort of where the organs would be where it's like more metal. Yeah. Yep. If if you were to imagine like. He's pretty much a Terminator construction. He looks very much like that sort of physiology. He's got an epidermis, but then just steel. Yeah, so I can imagine, like, I, I just kind of, like, roll onto my stomach, or onto my back, like, <laughs> like, because I just, I just football tackled metal. Yep. Yeah. 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 Now, that was something. Yeah, your chest kind of hurts. Yeah. Um, I, I lean down to help, to, like, help him up. And yep. as, as I'm doing it, I just sort of, like, my head, while I, like, have my hand outstretched, my head, like, slowly tilts up, and I'm assuming I see the guy's body. If there is any remains of it, I don't know how these guns work. The, um... So, the the Sergeant Major actually has a, a solid bore assault rifle. Mm. Um, nobody else in your, in your platoon has something like that. Uh, and he fired one bullet, the casing hit the floor, and... The brown man is nowhere to be seen. However, one of the soldiers that was brought with you is dead with a bullet wound to the head on the floor. And there are people shouting. Uh, the other soldiers are simply shouting, What? Where, where'd he go? Has ah, a bullet. Yeah, and they're just so confused. They're looking around. All of them have their guns up. Some of them question. are looking really suspiciously at the sergeant major. I have a question. And... With this, because yeah. I think like most of the time, whenever I've seen anybody die, I've been connected to the sort of mother AI. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've had someone to kind of like walk me through that experience. Uh, yeah, someone without as, feelings. Would this count as when you see something disturbing? Roll a d6 for insanity. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. This is like this is a very sudden loss of life. Mm-hmm. And it's on our side too. Yep. Okay, I will roll a d6. Yeah, and you've probably never been this close. Oh no. And Lasky would have also been in this situation. Happy. That's not Lasky, Warren, sorry. This is for Warren. Warren, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Warren keeps it together somehow Mm -hmm. as he starts to get up. I think think probably only due to the fact, like... I've seen men die before. That's the thing. And you you might have been vindicated because you were trying to save Caleb. Yeah. Basically. So so the Um, static in my head starts sort of rising in volume? um, Yeah, you, you look at the body and... 
you just feel all these things that are so weird to you. All these feelings that you haven't felt in a long time, but they don't feel like human feelings. It almost seems and feels like data, but it's processing in the strangest of ways. And when you look at the body, you almost feel a skip in your CPU cycles. Mm -hmm. And for a second, this is something that happens like almost, this is almost impossibly rare for AI. Um, they have basically a cycle skip uh, where your processor will shut down for a moment. It's, a, it's the same thing as, a, as when humans sneeze, their heart stops for just yeah. a second. Yeah. However, in AI, it's it's ridiculously rare, basically. And that happens to you, and it's it is the most unsettling thing because you die for a second. Yeah. And when, when I when I come back out of it, like when I was like I was midway through helping Warren up when this happened. Yeah. And I immediately start like sort of coughing and spluttering as if trying to reject uh, something that I'd swallowed. Which would be the yeah. thing if I was like if if the you know, an Android was ever curious and was like, I wonder if I could actually eat food and would like put it into their throat, they would like regurgitate yep. it back up. But yeah, I'm yep. just like I'm just like trying to cough and splutter and I like fall back to the ground, like on top of uh, Warren. Yeah. I'm like mm -hmm. coughing and spluttering, but like nothing's coming out, so just <laughs> like just these disgusting sounds. Yeah, I like I'm, I'll kind of roll them off of me and check them for uh, bullet wounds because it's like, oh, did he get hit too? What the fuck? And I like I I like breathe in with like a wheeze, and you hear like sort of the whirring of like sort of motors. Yeah. With uh, Caleb, what's <laughs> Caleb? <laughs> I, do, I, do, I don't <laughs> I don't realize hello Warren <clears throat> are you are you hit like I just looking around and then yeah. look back at the soldier um, by the way all the other men almost all the other men are just crowding around this dead body the sergeant major has taken a few steps he's at the head no one's really around the two of you my status check says I'm I'm fine and that time it is like a, a robotic stuttering for the first time. Yeah, I am f f fine. Like yeah. What All right, Sam. Hell, I'm just yeah, like looking at him, major. and I like try and mm -hmm. like push myself up and offer him a hand again. Yeah, yeah, I'll take it. And when I get up, I'll uh, I'm gonna point my gun back at the vent and just like take a look at it. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, the Sergeant Major seems very just on edge, very confused. Like, he's he's been in combat a lot. But this seems like it's shaking him like nothing else. He says, What the fuck just happened? Uh, yeah, and the uh, Sergeant, Sergeant Baker, it was a member of Squad Baker mm. that was just shot. Um, it was basically your sharpshooter. Mm-hmm. Ironically, uh, Sergeant Baker just looks up. He looks to you, um, Warren, and then back to the Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major, I don't want to ask this of you because I don't know if you'll give the right answer, but what's protocol in this situation? This is friendly fire. And the Sergeant Major just stares at him. We can talk more about protocol once we're off this rock. We're, we should get his we should get his body back to the ship. Lasky won't let us in till we find the suits, but maybe he'll let maybe he'll let old Bobby. Oh, damn it. No shit fucking corkscrew. What? No, it weren't. No, he's he's right. That that uh, man that came out of the vent was standing right there right before I dove at Caleb. I would have felt him run by me. He would have had to back up into me. I, I was behind, so I jumped at Caleb. He, he didn't run into me at all. It's like he... he it's like you weren't there. No, I don't. 
We're going to take his body back. All right? Just come on. Uh, uh, squad, um, uh, squad Felix, stay here. The other squad. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure there's much use in taking him back, sir. You wouldn't understand. Tin can. I could try to come back to see if the power is back. See what the lieutenant thinks. It's worth a shot. Go ahead. I don't give a shit what he thinks, but this is dire straits. Whiskey is mood muted for the audience. I'm I'm not anymore. I realized okay. that I was, but you you basically like sort of uh, re- re- reiterated what I was saying anyway. So okay, so okay, just check. Yeah, um, yeah. I I'm going to try and come over to Lasky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. You get nothing. It appears power is still again. down. I do try again. Uh, just because the two you, check. Yep. Uh, you also, also you can you can try on a different um, comm channel, basically. Yeah, I'll try on a different comm channel. Alright, yeah, you can you can try on the officer channel. Yeah, um, I try on like a that, few just to sort of go through make sure they, uh, like usually, all of them are down. That's usually a much better signal. Um, and you get a uh, ping back and Lasky you are in contact this is Lasky hello lieutenant one of the members was shot by sergeant major one of the insurgents no it would appear to be one of the members of Sergeant, I've forgotten, uh, Baker's. Is that his name? Yes. It would appear to be one of the members of Sergeant Baker's crew. Squad. Sorry, sir. Mm. Tell him to watch themselves down there. They're intending to bring him back to the ship, sir. That is a negative. No. We'll collect our dead once this is done. Sergeant Major. Figure out what the fuck is going on. And get those Evo suits here. Stat. Am I understood? I understand you, sir. Loud and clear. Sergeant Major, I say, like, with the comms still on. Yep. <clears throat> Lieutenant yes. Lasky says we aren't to journey back to the ship. Of course he did. Fucking course he did. Well, <clears throat> guess we're just even I did now uh, one of the other men in the squad start to pull basically what is the equivalent of a uh, an all purpose uh, rain tarp that can be used for so many different things and just drapes it over his body mm-hmm. while the other squad members are keeping a lookout uh, by the way the, these hallways I didn't really describe them they are very industrial um, very dark metal though very clean it's not this pristine white or very like smooth surfaced place. Uh, every so often, there seems to be basically a breaker, bo- the equivalent of a futuristic breaker box uh, that's set into the wall that gives access to circuitry. Um, but it's heavily locked down, mm. mm-hmm. and the lighting is on full. Uh, so the uh, yeah, Sergeant Baker stands up, raises his assault rifle just toward the ceiling with one hand, you know, just kind of lazily. <sighs> so we're continuing. We have to. Right. Yeah, Baker just rolls his eyes, seemingly. Well, then let's hoof it. Just looks at Sergeant Major one more time with just a furious look. Like, how could you do this? Mm-hmm. Sergeant Major shakes his head Squad Felix. <sighs> Scout ahead down the straight passage. We're going to take this break as he's kind of pointing farther down. It's lit pretty well, so you can see quite easily. Uh, there is the hall that continues to the next hangar bay. 
and then the hall that goes down a T-junction towards the central area. Mm -hmm. Then you guys start moving. Mm. I'm also keeping like an ear out just for any more sounds of vents above. Yeah. Yeah, you, you keep an ear out. And again, it's just this very distinct silence and yet not silence. There is the static. Yeah, like as we walk by, I'd like look at the corpse like one last time, like the boots sticking out of the tarp as we're yep. just walking by. Yeah. Yeah. You knew that, man. Yeah, like whisper like a soft like prayer. Yeah. Also, um, I didn't get to mention this before, but this is an established thing. Uh, you might still have made the prayer, but religion as it is known is completely illegal mm. in, in I, anywhere, almost, in this uh, universe. Mm. Simply because of past atrocities. Because of ISIS. Nice. Something like that. So you guys are continuing down the hall. And uh, Squad Felix breaks from you guys once you get to the T-junction. And as they break, uh, you hear Sergeant Major over the comms. We'll regroup at this T-junction. 30 minutes. All right? No ifs, ands, or buts. Crawl through the vents if you have to. He did it. Whoever right. the fuck was. Right. <sighs> who's, yeah. who's with who? Ah, uh, yeah, the Sergeant Major is pulling Squad Baker in the direction of the T toward the center. That's it. So, yeah, oh, so the squads are splitting up. I thought you were splitting up the squad. Never mind. Yeah. I didn't nope. say anything. No, nah, no, it's all good. Um, yeah. He starts taking you guys down that hall, uh, leading up in front of Baker a little bit. Baker keeps here and there just, like, looking over at the Sergeant Major. And... At some point, you guys come to uh, a series of doors on either side of this hallway, um, widely spaced, but a series of doors. Um, none of them have a window. There are these very distinct metal doors, probably slide open at a command. Um, though there's no console next to the door, you assume there might be kind of some kind of key card you have to hold up to it. Uh, Caleb, when you did a scan for life signs, did you see anything on the periphery? Did I? Uh, no. The last time you did a life sign check, there was just those couple patrolling. Insurgents. Yeah, yeah, a couple scattered people, and then like, uh, like two hundred bodies inside the A. Yeah, yeah, the central strut. Yes, sir. I mean. No, sir. No. All right. Well, let's keep going then. You guys keep going. And comes a point where as you guys pass a light, Warren, you're probably nearer to the back of the group, yep. I might imagine. Yeah. Yep. And you, you're glancing back here and there. You notice uh, one of the lights is shut off. No one else seems to notice. I just kind of like mentally note it and just sort of like, it's odd. Yeah. And uh, keep going. Yeah. You keep going with the group. <clears throat> and basically there comes a point where this this long hallway leads to a large, almost semi-cylindrical <clears throat> uh, opening on yeah. not not uh, not into whatever area you're going into, but basically there's a doorway from your hallway into this large semi-cylindrical path that you can assume is basically the main conduit that leads around this place. Hmm. And there are large doorways scattered all around within this thing. There are lights uh, smattering all over. 
and you guys can actually hear as you come into this hallway a whistle. And it continues like that. It's this very sonorous, very measured whistle seems to be coming from someone rather than an instrument echoing down one side of this place. And the sergeant major out front seems to notice and halts everyone. What the fuck is that? I continue moving in the direction of it when he halts it. Yeah, you, you continue moving. You, you start to keep following it. And you notice it getting a little bit louder as you start following it around. And you see one of the doors open amongst all these many closed doors. Some of them very large. This one, not so much. And Warren, something is strange about this whistle. It's the exact same way your father used to whistle. Yeah, I, at that point, like, I'm not even pointing my gun now. Like, my gun's just kind of, like, shouldered, but very, very, like, sloppily. Yeah. I'm just sort of, I'm just kind of, like, staring at it in disbelief. Yeah. You all see this open doorway. I'd like to slowly try and peer around the side. Yeah. You're walking up to it. Uh, you hear the Sergeant Major just kind of whisper, shout to you, Caleb, wait. Don't enter without us. Come on. Yeah, I ignore him. Yep. You go up to the doorway. Uh, try to peer inside around a corner. And you notice that there is nothing inside. There is a seemingly panel that is turned on that you see has a uh, radio frequency activated on it. It seems to be tapped into some station broadcasting on the orbital level. It, oh, so the sound's coming from the broadcast? Caleb knows this. It's... It's... It's playing, sir. And I just, like, start walking into the room. Yep, you start walking into the room. Sergeant Major... Oh, God damn it, Caleb. He tries running up to you. He gets to the doorway just as you enter, and he looks in. Fuck. You see inside, this is basically a janitorial quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got some equipment here and there. That panel in the wall is a control panel doubling as a basically radio set, which is an easy thing for computers to do in this day and age. Yeah. And, uh, Warren, as you are listening to this... It is exactly what and how your father used to whistle. Yeah, I would kind of, I would just kind of like walk up into the room and like stand mm -hmm. in the doorway. And yep. like at this point, my gun is just sort of hanging by the strap that's around yep. me, you know, like, so it's just at my side. Yeah, exactly. As you get to the doorway, um, you're, you've probably moved ahead of some of the other men and... As you get to the doorway, it's maybe you, the Sergeant Major, Sergeant Baker, and Caleb in this room. And once you cross the threshold of the room, there's this burst of... And the panel just bursts. Shatters. The sound stops. That's... Yeah. Both sergeants flinch a little bit. Shit, what the fuck? I look up at the light. Is it still on? Yes. That's very... That shouldn't... Could, 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 the, re could, could the rest of you hear that? There was a, a whistle. Something coming out of that panel. I'm more curious. Why is this door open? It's supposed to be a full-scale lockdown. I didn't he walks over to the door. Hear anything? I mean, yes. Hmm. Yeah, Lasky. 
uh, yeah, Warren, but yeah. Warren. I, 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 keep, I, keep not, I keep not rolling for Warren. It's sorry. okay, it's okay, it's okay. I, I just need to remember who you're playing at the time. Yeah, yeah. so I just, yeah, yeah, so I just swallow it, you know, and keep it to myself. Mm-hmm. I'm a soldier, so. Yeah. You get over it. Power through it. Um, yeah. And you guys... With the sergeant major, uh, he's he's kind of analyzing the door. Actually, he kind of runs his finger in the sort of slot that the door would slide out of. What the shit? I fucking hell. Yeah, he, he kind of abruptly pulls his hand away, just flicks it a little bit, and uh, begins turning in your direction think the door might be and abruptly sh- the door shuts on him Ugh. and he's crushed against the wall he- uh, uh i'm gonna run oh. and to try and uh pry the door open yeah yeah uh you rush over to it and just grab at an open area caleb what's your first response i just tilt my head you tilt your head at it yeah, and Sergeant Baker rushes over as well, attempts to help you, Warren, and um, go ahead and give me a uh, d6. Uh, I'm going to use uh, sanity. So two Okay, d6. what is your occupation also? What am I? Yeah, what is your occupation in uh, for Jump. Warren? Uh, I'm a uh, private first class. I'm a... I'm a uh, He's good at shooting I, guns. I, yeah, yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah. Pretty, yeah, I shoot guns, and I have a I have a small uh, uh, pack on me, which is kind of like extra Com's extra unit. extra comms unit yeah. for short range, just in case People anything can... goes wrong. So, but, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So totally, if you wanna if you wanna utilize some sanity. Yeah. So I'm doing that. Okay. Three. Then another another D six for if you go awry. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you start trying to pull the door away along with Sergeant Baker. And as you're doing so, as you're trying to pull this door away, it is budging. It is moving. But as it's doing so, you notice that it has completely crushed his rib cage inward. It's crushed his pelvis. This man is broken. And as you kind of look up at his eyes, you just see something that you have never seen before. You see a man in horrible pain and it, it hurts you mentally yeah so I try I'm just trying with everything yeah. that I have to, oh yeah to, no you guys, you guys open, and I'm just trying to tell away. him like mm-hmm. shh, shh, it's gonna it's it's gonna be okay just 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 look look at me stay with me stay yeah. with and as I'm just trying yeah, yeah. to like wrench it open and I'm just yelling to other people like mm-hmm. help help us help us I'd like yeah, to yeah, yeah. well because mm-hmm. sergeant uh Sergeant Major was the one who got hit by the door, correct? Yes. Yeah. Sergeant uh, Baker is in the room, just trying to get like a yes. feel for the. Yeah, I'd like to go yes. to Sergeant Baker, pull out like his sidearm, and try and shoot Sergeant Major in the head. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sergeant Baker is currently trying to pry this door away. Are you trying to like mask at all what you're doing? No. Why? Okay. Cool. Um. Go ahead and uh, to get the gun away so yeah as soon as as soon as sergeant baker realizes uh you've you've grabbed away at his gun he's like what are you doing um actually yeah he's not he's not going to uh try to really reach for you he trusts you go ahead and uh give me a d6 if you're trying to shoot this man in the head okay can i use an assembly point to make it 2d6 absolutely yeah you can always so on I any think roll this will be more interesting yeah four and then five Nice. Uh, I don't see the five, but I trust you. So, yeah. You going on just pure logic. Pull the gun out. Raise it toward his head. And as, as Sergeant Baker is just trying to pry this thing away. No. Caleb, ah! Caleb, what are you doing? No. The laser bolt just hits him right in his forehead. Seems to melt basically through his skull, through his head part ways. And... Uh, the sergeant major is just. He slumps slowly with a lot of groaning and just twitching forward. 
And as soon as you guys get the door off, he slumps to the ground. I drop the gun and, like, take a couple steps back, like, bumping into, like, probably, like, a broom and knocking it over. Yeah. Sergeant Baker just takes a step back as the door starts to recede from you guys, pulling it away. You seem to have exceeded its pressure limitation. What the fuck? Why did you do that, Caleb? I don't know. He goes to wrench the gun away from you. Yeah, I, I dropped it already. I'm just like looking at Oh, my yeah, hand. yeah, yeah. He, he, he wrenches the gun off the ground, holds it in his hand for a second, and then puts it in his hol holster. He looks back at the sergeant major, looks at you. Do you know if he was dead? He was going to die? I think so. What do you mean you think so? Uh, the sergeant leans down. supposed to know these things. Yeah, um, Warren, this image of this man's broken, bloody face is just imprinted in your memory. Yeah, I'll look down at the sergeant one more time, and let's just, just for, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I think, you look I think down. I am going to roll that as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you just shot, you just shot and killed okay, a cool. compatriot of yours. Yeah, yeah. You're, are you, uh, both two now, I think? Uh, yeah, I'm on I two, think yeah. I'm at three, yeah, I'm at three. Shit. What? Uh, oh, what does that three. mean? That oh, so that means that I'm still okay. So that I means that so. I go up to four, right? I uh, equal or lower than your insanity. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. Yeah. So, as as blood starts seeping out of your former sergeant major, we're going to take a break. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I'm gonna get some water. Uh, Zakratos, this is, um, 